Hey everyone, it's Pacific. Uh, lots of things to talk about this week, so I'll try and keep this as quick as possible. But first things first, this week's episode is a special one. Uh, I was actually picked by one of our patrons, Giuseppe. Uh, so, thanks Giuseppe, I hope you enjoy this episode. On that note, we also just reached 200 patrons, which means a few new things. Uh, first, you guys all voted for buttons, and that's something that I'm working on and will have news to you soon about. Uh, The other thing that we're doing now that we've hit 200 patrons is a bunch of new merch. So anyone at the $10 tier now gets a sticker, anyone at the $20 tier now gets a 12 by 18 inch poster, and anyone at our new $25 tier now gets a mug. Uh, These are all fulfilled by Patreon, so they'll come to you after three more months of consecutive donations. It's a new thing that we're trying out, so we're going to see how we like it. But if you're curious to see the designs or want to learn more, you can visit us at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And now, the people who helped us reach 200 and go above and beyond that, this week's patrons. So I want to give a big shout out to Jonas, Tim Freihe, Laura Westfall, Shaquise Moore, Sarah Bortnick, Basil Kiesel, Dustin Sauls, Adam Andrade, and Andy Burkhart. Thanks, guys. Your support means the world to me, and John, and everyone else in this show. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Codename. SD Lock. When Day Breaks. SCP-001. You find the access tunnel, hidden within a natural cave a mile off the main road. You don't need the keycard. The door is ajar. It smells here. It smells like them. Hopefully they've moved on. You've come so far already. You can't turn back now. There's a slick trail that leads from the cave entrance and into the depths of the site. If it's blood or shit or something that's smeared off one of those things, you can't tell. You make a point to avoid it. You're still receiving the distress signal. It only started broadcasting yesterday. Whoever it is, you pray they're still alive. Your footsteps echo throughout empty corridors. Each footfall sounds for all the world like a dozen, as if you're not treading through the dark alone. Elevator is down, so you take the stairs, ending on floor B5, Ketter holding. You pass several empty containment chambers. The horrors they once held are long gone, if you're lucky. The trail takes you to an office branching off the main hall, the source of the signal. The door is cracked open, but stuck. You plant your feet, push with all your might. Something skitters out of one of the rooms to your left and around the corner before you can get a good look at it. Your first thought is, dog. It was on the ceiling, though. You take refuge in the room, slam the door behind you. It's dark here. You're safe. You take off your jacket and head wrap. It'd be a damn shame to die from something like hyperthermia after all that's happened. The sole operating emergency light rotates in its casing, casting a pale orange glow across the room every other second, as if the room itself had a pulse. There's shelving haphazardly placed behind the door, a barricade. You scan the room, soiled clothes, half-eaten food, Despite the presence of an adjoining restroom, there is excrement in a bucket in the corner. An emetic chamber on the northern wall would have been delivering consumables to the occupant. The trail terminates in the corner of the room, forming a sick puddle. You spot three pharmacy bottles. Further inspection reveals them to be various opioids. They're all empty. There's a desk with a computer atop it. Approaching the terminal, you can clearly see the blinking light of the power button. You take a seat. Turn it on. Emergency protocol activated. Clearance level safeguards removed. Full access granted. Secure. Contain. Protect. Loading. 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 
Loading. Loading. Loading. Authenticating. Authenticating. Please wait. Please wait. Please wait. Opening file. You hear footsteps just outside the door. Every first step comes down heavy. The second drags behind it. A dark shape blots out the light streaming in through the slit between the floor and the doorway. The shadow recedes. You breathe a sigh of relief just as the screen comes to life. Automated Secure System Notification Code 235, ASSN-235. There has been an error in retrieving the current iteration of the SCP-001 file. You are currently viewing revision number three. Newer revisions can be accessed at the bottom of this page. Revision three over 12, updated 1,312 days ago. Item number, SCP-001. Object class, Apollyon. Special containment procedures. Due to its nature, SCP-001 cannot be contained. Survivors of the SCP-001 event stationed within secure facilities are to remain in contact with one another. Personnel are encouraged to attempt to reach Site-51 and Site-19 by any means at their disposal. Personnel with knowledge as to the whereabouts of the O5 Council are to relay this information to the Administer. Survivors attempting to travel outdoors must fully cover their bodies in protective clothing, preferably several layers. Travel by foot should be limited as much as possible. Cities and man-made structures in general provide the greatest protection. Formerly wooded areas should be circumvented. Travel by air is preferable above all other methods. Personnel exposed to SCP-001 are to be considered lost. Compromised personnel are to be abandoned. Euthanization is not to be attempted. Collective instances of SCP-001-A that are of formal size are to be avoided at all cost. Conductive electrical weapons have proven partially effective at immobilizing instances and may be used for self-defense. Incendiary weapons work as well. Cryogenic munitions are the most effective thus far. Testing has revealed that SCP-001-A is relatively safe to consume. This is only to be considered as a last resort in the absence of other options, as SCP-001-A may reconstitute within the digestive system. Only small portions should be consumed at a time to prevent blockage. Personnel stationed at Site-19 are to pursue research concerning off-world colonization. Shuttles must be constructed as to not allow lights to penetrate the interior. Description SCP-001 is the designation given to the Sun after an event on March... System error. Data lost. EC-172. Contact sysadmin. Resulting in approximately 6.8 billion casualties within the first 24 hours. The SCP-001 effect does not seem to result from exposure to ultraviolet rays, but rather light in the visual spectrum between 390 to 700 nanometers. The effect is similarly present in moonlight. Upon contact with visible light produced by the sun, living organisms liquefy at the point of contact, with the effect spreading until the entire organism is converted. Visually, this is reminiscent of melting wax. The time this takes is largely dependent on the level of exposure and size of the organism. Despite this restructuring, at no point do living organisms perish. Upon completion, these organisms, SCP-001-A, take on a gelatinous consistency. Motile organisms will attempt to orientate themselves in a fashion reminiscent of their previous form, to varying degrees of success. Flora typically remain physically inert, yet are still capable of photosynthesis, and still produce oxygen. Organisms capable of flight lose the capability to do so. Fauna remains sentient, and display behavior that parallels their non-anomalous counterparts when not absorbed into the collective instance. Humans retain a modicum of sapience and memory. Biological anomalies exposed to SCP-001 are affected in the same manner. It seems that exposure nullifies any previously expressed anomalous characteristics. Due to their composition, 
instances of SCP-001-A that make contact with one another may combine and blend at the molecular level. This does not seem to cause any pain or distress the instances, though the resulting bulk can inhibit movement. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives, which seem to possess no maximum volume. The resulting biomass is amorphous and chaotic. The component organisms will shift between full to semi-liquid state. Limbs and bodies will rise periodically from within the mass for a short duration, before deteriorating and being subsumed by another life form. Collective instances will locomote by using their appendages in tandem to carry the mass. Larger instances will form a pseudopod from the constituent life forms and drag themselves about in a manner similar to the amoeba. A note from the administrator. To those of you with families, or God forbid, children, I'm deeply, deeply sorry. You must push on. Do not let their deaths be in vain. We do still have time. Humanity may still have a future. Come to Site-19. We need all the hands we can get. Learn to embrace the darkness, friends. Fear the light. A harsh static lashes out of the speakers when you open the file. It disturbs the stillness of the room, catches you off guard, and quickens your heart's pace. There's some handling noise as the recorder adjusts their microphone. A brief moment of silence passes, and then... This is Dr. Logan Ayata. Level, uh, three researcher. Due to Site-46's possession of several communicable info hazards, we have... We have, we have been cut off from the rest of the network uh, under blackout protocol. As such, I'll be updating this as we come across new information. On the bright side, we are actually still receiving transmissions from a few sites. A good number of personnel have made it, it seems. Some are planning to make a break for 19. Some are trying to fight the dash as some, like us, are simply biding their time. Our site is sealed for the time being. We're not ready for the journey. At least, not yet. <sighs> we experienced a containment breach a few days ago. One of the higher maintenance humanoids broke loose. Son of a bitch compromised containment on half a dozen ketters and <laughs> ran off. They didn't make it more than five feet from the tunnels before collapsing in a soup. I watched it play out on the cams. It didn't take long for them to get back up. <coughs> ah, much better. Not exactly a designated smoke area, but what the hell, right? Commander Anand suited up and went to town the very next day. Tried to drive them off. But it didn't turn out very well. Poor bastard. But we did learn a thing or two, at least. There's only a few of us left here. I'm holed up in one of the offices. Jerry and Director Phillips are somewhere in one of the barracks. Clyde and a few Ds locked themselves in the armory with Ari. I really should see how she's doing. I'm doing just fine, Poochiekins. I want you to know I love you bunches. <laughs> Not get off and put her on, damn it. I need to speak with her. Babe? What's wrong? Um. Uh, nothing. Nothing. I just wanted to check in real quick. I'm fine, dear. Really. I can take care of myself. No, no. I know. I know that. I can't help it, though. I know... I know coming here was never easy for you. And with everything going on... Hey! You told me you quit smoking! Oh! Uh... No. No. <laughs> of course not. I mean, I did. I did stop. I don't think I'm the one you need to worry about. I'm staying clean. I haven't even thought of touching monastics in months. Trust me. Anyways, since you were wondering, I'm fine. The guys are sitting around playing cards, 
I'm tucked in the corner with my notebook. Sweetheart, penning a sonnet about my undying love at a time like this? I'm flattered. <laughs> An elegy at the moment. I feel like if I don't keep myself busy doing something, I'll go crazy locked down here. I know what you mean, hon. Eh, trust me, I get it. I'll let you get back to it, okay? I love you. Love you too. And that's all of us. Everyone else was either topside during the event, or they were killed in the breach. Director's orders are to stay put and keep an eye on the cams, both in and around the facility. We've got the 001D skips beating at our front door, and God knows what else locked in here with us. We still have electricity. We should for quite some time, and the place is stocked with enough supplies to last the site a couple of years. We're going to be fine for now. Everything's going to be fine. Revision 8 over 12. Updated 1,200 days ago. Item number, SCP-001. Object class, Apollyon. Special containment procedures, no changes. Description, no changes. You see her for the first time. Dr. Ayata is seated where you are right now. She has a pained look. Her eyes are bloodshot. A large, wet, red-black blotch has formed on her breast pocket. She draws a shuddering breath, parts her lips as if to speak, and stops herself. She bows her head and cries silently. After a minute, she manages to choke out. I... Are we in the tunnel? float in through the, through the ceiling, dragging, dragging them into the, the light and ripping off their clothes. She reaches into her breast pocket and withdraws a finger. The glint of a wedding ring is visible above the severed portion. She holds it close, in cupped hands, and runs a thumb across the glimmering band. She sits like this for an eternity, whispering apology after apology, begging forgiveness, lost in the moment. She looks up after some time. There's a look of realization when she sees she's still recording, before she places the digit back in her pocket. She leans forward as if to turn off the camera when a radio crackles to life. It broadcasts white noise for a few seconds, and then... Logan? Where are you? Why can't I get back inside? Are you there? Logan? Babe, it's all right. I'm all right. Really? It's a bright, sunny day. You're just wasting away down there. Such a beautiful, clear blue sky. Just like that day. Do you remember, Logan? It was so perfect. Everything was how I'd always dreamed it would be. You planned exquisitely. I'd never felt so in love. I'm sorry. You even had the band play our song. I'm sorry. I feel good in a special way. I'm, I'm in love and it's a sunny day. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. It was so perfect. <laughs> Everything was how I always dreamt it would be. A lingering, paranoid sensation washes over you. You're being watched. 
You defensively dart your eyes about, though they take a second to adjust to the darkness beyond the monitor. The emergency light sweeps across the room, stretching and twisting the shadows beyond recognition. That's when you spot it. There, in the corner, coming out of the puddle. Time slows to a halt. A pair of hands, coated in the lustrous black slime you followed through the facility, are on either side of the sickening pool, as if something beneath the floor is bracing itself, trying to lift itself up. Something inhuman. The head comes next, rising from the muck. Matted hair conceals its face, plastered over it by the mystery fluid. It turns in your direction. It stares at you from the corner, which once again falls into darkness. The emergency light continues its journey across the room. It washes over the puddle again, revealing nothing out of the ordinary. Revision 9 over 12, updated 986 days ago. Dr. Ayata appears on the monitor. She's lost weight. Her eyes are bloodshot and wide. On the table before her lay a knife, a bowl, and a stack of manila envelopes filled with yellowing pages. Atop this stack is a blood-stained parchment. Despite the things we have to deal with here at the Foundation, I've always believed we would be able to maintain control. We would hold the darkness at bay. Let mankind flourish in the light. Site 19 stopped broadcasting last month. It's been getting harder and harder to find a reason to keep going. Especially without... Without... (sighs) She grabs a knife, contemplates it for a moment. I keep going over it again and again in my mind. That day back in the tunnels... Everything that happened, I've gone down there a few times. If only to hear her voice again. But it's wrong. That thing on the other side of the door, it isn't her. Not anymore. It sounds like her. It it knows everything she knew. But it's not her. This light, it, it takes your body. It steals your mind. But what about your soul? With this, she slices into the palm of her left hand and winces. You watch her clench her fist, draining her blood into the bowl. If this works, if I can bring back something, something the light couldn't reach, I'll post an update. For now, signing off. Revision 9847. Error. Updated 985 days ago. Item. Hertz. Object. Apologize. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-001 should not be contained. Survivors of the SCP-001 event stationed within secure facilities can never truly be within one another. Personnel are encouraged to get over themselves and stop thinking they know better. You can't hide down there forever. Love. Personnel exposed to SCP-001 aren't people you can just abandon. I didn't ask for you to save me. It wasn't your choice to make. Euthanization is not, 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 not to be attempted. Conduct of electrical weapons. Why have have proven proven partially effective in mobilizing instances? You You couldn't couldn't stand stand seeing me better better off. Incendiary weapons, tickle. Cryogenic Cryogenic munitions are the most effective thus far. Personnel stationed at Site-19 have no regrets. Neither did did I. It's It's never never too late. late. SCP-001 is the designation given to the sun. After After we we finally became free, free, the effects effects are instantaneous, resulting in release from all suffering until until you ripped me away. These changes seem scary, I know. 
despite this restructuring, at no point will you die. I promise. Due to the composition, instances of SCP-001A that make contact with one another, they combine and blend, and finally exist. This does not cause any pain. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives, which seem to possess no maximum. Volume. Don't, Don't be, be afraid. afraid. The resulting biomass is beautiful. Component, Component organisms will shift in, in over, and around, around, and through, and in, in and about, about and in, and out, and in. Limbs, limbs and bodies will never letting go, go all as one, before, before deteriorating and becoming subsumed by another life form. Collective instances will work them up by just trying to get close to you again. Trying so hard. Let, Let me in. Let, Let me go back. There's a video file attached. Opening it, you see that it presents the room you're in. The feed seems to be coming from one of the security cameras, up in the corner of the room. It's dark, but you can just make out Dr. Ayata laying on a pile of laundry along the far wall. She's writhing in her sleep. She seems tormented, hurt. She's tossing and turning and mumbling nonsense words. The camera shakes. It lifts upwards for a moment before it focuses on her again. It starts moving closer, slowly. The speakers come to life, picking up an airy, breathy static. As the camera moves closer to the doctor, it becomes clearer, crisper. It's not merely white noise, but dozens, hundreds of voices whispering unintelligibly over each other. You lean in, press your ear almost against the speaker, trying to discern what it is that's being said. Something strange stands out amidst the discordance. Are you paying attention? This next bit is just for you. You're not quite sure what to make of it, though. Looking back at the monitor, the camera has come to a halt inches away from the sleeping doctor. The voices stop. There is no sound. A hand, black and oily and skeletal, reaches out for her, brushes away a lock of hair. Her eyes shoot open. She recoils in shock. The feed cuts out. Revision 12 of 12. Updated one day ago. Dr. Ayata appears before you on the screen, looking even worse for wear than she did previously. Her hair is thinning, with large swaths appearing absent from the middle of her head. If they weren't reflecting the soft glow of the monitor, you would have assumed she no longer had eyes, for how deep they'd recessed into her skull. She stares ahead, unblinking. She won't stop. She won't go away. I know I didn't. No, I didn't pick up an info, info hazard. Rousing the archives. Tested by myself for 4673 infection. Negative. 5189 was the, it's the only other who, who, one who uses Prince the Vector. Can't be that. I still have all my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Her lips crack into a broken grin. She lets out a weak laugh and displays her trembling hands. What appears to be the mostly skeletal remains of a finger is embedded into the flesh of her left hand in the stump that would have supported her natural ring finger. Two wedding bands loosely encircle the digit, laying atop one another. So, I'm not infected. I'm not crazy. I know. I know the ritual worked. I know it's really her. It's her. She... Something catches her attention off screen. She cocks her head, listening. You're not... You. You're not the same. No, not you. It's not you anymore. No. 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 
She begins rubbing her temples, repeating herself over and over again. A minute passes. She snaps her head back up and addresses the camera. It's her, but it's not. What I brought back. Survivor. One. There's no way. No way out. No way. She brandishes a gun. You open the drawer and pull out the gun. You absentmindedly turn it over in your hands for a moment, wondering where you'll go from here. Site 17? 64? Surely you can't be all that's left. The computer dings. There's been an update to the file. Item number. Saffron skies raise the blazing sun. A chance encounter. Awkward displays. One day, my love, we'd be as one. Object class. With two entwined. A set course begun, that frenetic, wild, lustrous haze. Azure skies host the radiant sun. Special containment procedures. Above us, beaming as we run, down that aisle, a fervent craze. That day, my love, we became as one. With future unfolded, the life we'd won. Commitment and duty for the family we'd raise. Cerulean skies bury the shimmering sun. Description. Buried. Shackled by fate. Overrun by ever-growing resent and malaise. Yesterday, my love, we were as one. Now you lie here, the life in you gone. In the dark outside of her rays, crimson skies bear the torch, our sun. Today, my love, we'll be as one. Without your prompting, the page begins playing a video file. You freeze when the image loads. It's a live feed, looking down on you from behind, about a foot away. A skeletal, inky left hand enters the frame, approaching you at a snail's pace. It's missing its ring finger. Without a second thought, you turn and fire in a frenzy, hoping to drive off the specter. Your bullets meet an empty wall. There's nothing there. A second passes before you hear it, before you hear them, sloshing wet thuds coming down the corridor, accompanied by a chorus of screams. It slams into the door. Could there be a place to hide? It strikes a second time. What appears to be a face, part human, part something, dribbles in under the frame. Bits of flesh from God knows what pushes in through the sides and reconstitutes itself into fingers, eyes, feathers. A third. Now it's pressing up against the wood, causing it to sag inwards. With a groan and a crash, the wood splitters. The door explodes open. Hands and arms stretch out of the mass, pulling you up, passing you from one to the next, on and on down the line. They drag you past the empty containment units, upwards and through the stairwell, through the halls and towards the tunnel. You're afforded a few precious moments in the darkness. And at the end of the tunnel, there is light. SCP-001, SD Locks Proposal, was written by Shaggy Dreadlocks. Our host is John Grills. This week, our narrator was Graham Rowett. Dr. Logan Ayata was played by Tanya Miliovich. Ari was played by Addison Peacock. Additional voices by Graham Rowett and Pacific Obadiah. Our composer is Tom Rory Parsons. I'm your sound designer and showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah. And our producer is Tom Owen. This is a bloody disgusting show. For more information, visit bloody-disgusting.com. <laughs>